good obviously so when I put her on the seat she stumbled and she tried to go to the other side and she and, and I could see that she wasn't moving properly mm -hmm. so okay I ran with her to the vet and when we arrived she was perfectly fine okay. the vet couldn't find anything he made so Cleo is a 10-year-old female spade poodle mix that presented to us for evaluation of episodes. Um, these episodes are characterized by her becoming sort of glassy-eyed and stumbling. can last anywhere from a few seconds to a couple minutes, but she didn't fully lose consciousness. Um, so they happen at sort of any period of the day, so it wasn't always at night, it wasn't always associated with exercise. So there are a couple different things that we think of when we hear about episodes. Um, an episode is when a dog does something strange at home, kind of out of nowhere, and then it goes away just as quickly. But in between those episodes, they're completely normal, and many times on our examination, they're normal. So on our physical and neurological examination, Cleo was completely normal. She was alert, she was trotting around the exam room, all of the nerves around her face were normal, called the cranial nerves. She knew right where her feet were, what we call postural reactions. All of her reflexes were normal. Um, so the possible things that can cause episodes, we think of a handful of different things. We think of seizures. What a seizure is, is an abnormal burst of electrical activity in the front part of the brain. Um, the second thing we think of is something like what we call syncope, which is when the heart is not pumping enough oxygenated blood to the brain, many times dogs can get exercise intolerant or become weak or pass out. Um, sometimes dogs can have balance problems and that can mimic a seizure. Sometimes dogs can actually just be in pain and that causes them to act abnormal episodically. Um, sometimes dogs can have movement disorders or other things that can cause weakness. So this sounded most like a seizure disorder. In general, there are three main things that can cause a seizure. The first is something outside of the brain that secondarily affects the brain. Things like low blood sugar, liver problems, kidney problems, electrolyte abnormalities. And we rule, we rule those out with blood tests. Um, the second main thing that we worry about that can cause seizures is, is something physically wrong inside of the brain, like a brain tumor or a stroke or meningitis or encephalitis. And then the third thing that can cause seizures is what we call idiopathic epilepsy. That usually comes on between one and five years of age. They're usually normal between episodes. They usually have a normal exam, but usually they have um, generalized clonic tonic seizures. So there are a couple things that didn't really fit with idiopathic epilepsy with Cleo. Just one that um, she was 10 years of age when the episode started, and two that her seizures weren't really classic seizures. So the first thing we did was we evaluated the blood work that was done at her primary care veterinarian. And there, the veterinarian had done a CBC and a chemistry panel, which was normal with the exception of the blood sugar, which was slightly low. It wasn't dramatically low, but it was slightly low. Um, many times blood sugar can be low uh, just because of lab error or if we don't, if we don't run the blood work fast enough. Um, other things that we think of when we hear about low blood sugar, we think of um, sepsis, we think of certain diseases like Addison's, um, we think of severe liver disease, but sometimes excessive insulin production can cause low blood sugar. So the first thing that we did after evaluating the blood work that she came with was say, well, hey, maybe it's lab error or maybe they just didn't run it fast enough. So we repeated the blood sugar here in the hospital and it was low. Um, again, it wasn't dramatically low, but it was abnormal. So we kept her fasted for just a, a couple more hours and repeated the blood sugar again. And it was low this time, it was 49, which is, which is relatively low. So the next thing that we did was a blood test called an insulin glucose ratio. So basically what that is comparing is the amount of insulin in the body relative to the amount of glucose. Glucose is the main sugar that the body uses uh, for energy and we get that from eating meals and we store it in our liver. Um, but when we eat a meal, um, the, the body releases insulin that allows the cells to bring the blood sugar, the glucose, into the cell to be used. Um, diabetes is when there um, isn't enough insulin in the body, so the blood sugar gets really high 
because the body doesn't have insulin to bring it into the cell for the body to use. Um, if the body is making too much insulin, then the opposite happens. So um, the body uses all of the blood sugar and we get a really low blood sugar, which can cause things like seizures. One of the most common reasons to have too much insulin in the body is with an insulin producing tumor, what we call an insulinoma. So that's why we sent off the insulin glucose ratio to measure the amount of insulin relative to the amount of blood sugar. Um, so we sent that off and actually uh, about a day later we got the results. The blood sugar was low and the insulin was in the normal range, but for a dog that has a low blood sugar, the insulin should basically be, be zero. It should, um, insulin production should be almost turned off completely. So even though the insulin glucose ratio was normal, we still were very suspicious that there was too much insulin being secreted by the body. Um, so we referred Cleo um, to an internal medicine specialist Parker is a 21-week-old lab mix who presented for a sudden inability to walk. Three days prior to his visit, his owner found him dragging his rear limbs. He's very short and choppy in his rear limbs, um, so he's not taking nice, long, normal steps. Um, so he has a, a support problem. Um, I don't get the sense that he's painful, um, and when I flip his feet over, he replaces them pretty darn quickly. But when I pinch on his toes, he's weak in pulling them back in his rear limb. So these are all things that suggest a problem affecting the lower spinal cord, what we call the L4 to S3 spinal cord. So, um, so my job is to look at him and say, first, do I think it's a neurological problem or not? Because you know, dogs with bad knees or bad hearts can stop, you know, can stop walking or stop using their rear limbs. Um, I don't think it's a knee problem or a heart problem or anything like that. I think it's a, a neurological problem. And you know, we don't see a lot of of uh, you know, five-month-old dogs with, with neurological problems affecting their lower back. Um, we do see dogs that get slip discs, so that's kind of the most common thing that we see, but usually they're smaller dogs, usually they're, they're older dogs, so I mean, he would certainly be on the young side for something like a slip disc. So we start to think of things like malformations and infections. Um, those are things that tend to affect younger dogs than say older dogs they get things like spinal cord tumors and um, degeneration of the spinal cord and kind of adult dogs get things like meningitis and slipped discs and stuff like that in, in puppies we think of things like malformations in theory a stroke is possible a slip disc is still possible but we worry about certain infections um, one of the infections that we worry about in young dogs that affects the lower back is something called neospora um, that's a protozoal infection, so it's, it's kind of like a bacteria. Um, so they get it mostly from um, you know, the, the mom, either in utero or transplacental. Um, but so we often see it in young puppies. Question. Right. So um, the way we test him is um, with some blood tests. There are some blood tests that check for things like neospora. Um, but the only way for me to see the spinal cord and tell you does it look like a slipped disc or a tumor or a MRI. malformation is, is an MRI. Mm -hmm. So um, that's going to be our recommendation. Parker's MRI showed a small area of contrast enhancement within the lumbar spinal cord. This area may represent an infectious or inflammatory lesion, but could also represent a trauma. The team submitted infectious disease testing for Neospora and will contact the owner when these results are available. Dr. Wong recommended for Parker to continue to be rested until these results are available and continue giving prednisone as previously prescribed. Dr. Hu is an eight-year-old chihuahua who originally presented for evaluation of droopiness on the right side of the face a few weeks ago and was diagnosed with idiopathic facial nerve paralysis. Dr. Hu is improving. Her balance has improved but is not normal. 
most dogs with idiopathic facial nerve paralysis and idiopathic vestibular disease will improve but will not resolve. Dr. Wong recommends continuing with artificial tears and monitoring her.